Yo, what up? In this video, I want to talk about some of the different abilities in Overwatch 2, specifically the very powerful support abilities and ways that they could make them feel not as bad to play against, maybe. Because I am of the opinion, at least, that a big part of the reason why tank feels so miserable to play not the entire reason, but definitely a part of it is that usually as the tank, you are the victim of these cooldowns 90% of the time. Not all of them, because some of them are defensive oriented, you know, like Suzu, Lamp, but in particular, Ana's Biotic Grenade, and also Zenyatta's Discord Orb, if Zenyatta's ever played. Those are the primary ones to talk. And also, before we start, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out a lot. I suffer from crippling anxiety and existential dread. So it's usually hard for me to read the comments, but I'll try to this time because I would be curious to see what people think of these suggested changes as well as ideas for other abilities to talk about if there are other abilities that people don't like in the game or just abilities that people would want to see me talk about in general or parts of the game. Because again, I am a dumbass and I enjoy talking about this game because it's fun and interesting. There are a lot of moving parts to it and it's fun to analyze how they interact with each other to make Overwatch such a unique game. But yeah, please enjoy. So just going right right into it, starting with Ana's Biotic Grenade. Now, Nade in its actual power level is probably one of the most discussed topics in Overwatch. A lot of people say that it's really strong, it needs to be in the game, and it's fine, it's untouchable. Other people think it's just way too oppressive to play against and just completely invalidates some characters from the game. But Nade in general is a massive problem with what it presents the game with. It's basically necessary to counter certain characters that are hyper-sustained tanks like Maga and Roadhog. But at the same time, Nade just being in the game means that they have to try and balance these characters around being playable into, you know, Ana and her Biotic Grenade, which just means that they're going to be much stronger than they should be in matchups that don't have an Ana on the other team. And one of the best ways to fix this would just be to reduce the power of Nade so that it's no longer an insane tool to counter these characters and these kind of healing heavy playstyles. And then once you nerf Nade, you can also you know, nerf the sustain that these characters have because they no longer need it to counter nade as much. That way these characters are not as insane whenever there's a game where an Ana isn't on the enemy team. And the best way they could do this, and also just in general, I think would be a good idea for the game, is just to change how a lot of cooldowns interact with the tanks in particular. Tanks are kind of the backbone of the team. They're supposed to be bulky, take space, move in and be aggressive they also have a hitbox that is the size of a small galaxy and that's kind of why people always just throw cooldowns at the tank because how are you gonna miss that a lot of people probably view it as why would i throw the nade at a dps character who i could probably very easily miss when i can just you know chuck sleep dart at a tank or chuck nade at a tank where it's basically guaranteed to hit and i'm also hindering a target that is much more threatening to my team so i just chuck it on the tank every time they did this with sleep dart and I really like the Sleep Dart change. I was a fan of it when they first announced it, and I feel like it has been good for the game. A lot less people have been complaining about Sleep Dart, which is why now the attention is on Biotic Grenade instead. And honestly, I feel like they just do the same thing. Against supports and DPS, it just prevents all healing. Same as it did before. I don't think Nade was ever really a problem for supports and DPS heroes in most situations because they usually have smaller hitboxes, they are mobile. They're not a damage sponge. They can usually just play around getting anti pretty easily. And then for tanks, instead of having it just completely prevent healing, just have it reduce healing received by 50%. In exchange, maybe even increase the duration of the effect. Back up to 3.5 seconds, maybe even back up to 4. I don't know, they just have to tweak the numbers until it feels right. And then if you do this, then you can go through and look again at the sustainability that some of these tanks have, like Maga and Roadhog, Orisa, and then lower their sustainability on their own because now Nade isn't just this god-destroying tool that's going to destroy them unless they have an absurd amount of sustain that they can use before, during, after getting naded so that it's not just an instant death tool against them. I just thought the sleep chains was a good idea, and I think that they should go further with the idea of tanks getting reduced effects from different abilities in the game so that the role could feel a lot more fun to play as because you aren't having to deal with all of these negative effects being thrown at you 24-7.
Now the next ability we're going to go into is Immortality Field. Lamp, which I honestly feel like there's a few different ways that they could take this ability to make it more fun to play against. Starting with the one that's closest to the current iteration of Lamp and then moving further away from it. The first idea for changing Lamp would be to reduce the minimum health threshold that Lamp leaves you at. So currently, Lamp will prevent you from falling below 25% of your maximum health. And this is a lot. 50 health for most DPS and support heroes. And then, you know, 150, give or take, you know, 25 to 50 for the different tanks in the game. Meaning that even if you do get someone low and they get lamp and you break the lamp, they're still guaranteed to have a decent chunk of health remaining even after breaking lamp. Now, if you were to take the threshold and reduce it down to 10% or 15%, either of these would work. I think 10% might just be more consistent but if you do this i think lamp becomes much easier to play around just because it means that if you break lamp the target within lamp will now die to a melee from any character in the game now it's not like this would be much but this is just starting with the change that is most in line with how lamp is now it won't do anything if the lamp is used on a ranged target who is far away from you. But if it's a target that's overextending and they get lamp, now this means that you should be able to just use your primary fire to break the lamp and then quickly melee them to secure the kill. Which in a lot of cases would make lamp feel much better to play against, I think. Because now the target is actually in immediate danger once you do break the lamp instead of them being, you know still at 25% of their health, with it being very easy for them to be healed back up. You can just break lamp immediately melee. Now for another change I think would be better, it would just be to have any excess damage dealt to a target who is in range of immortality field be dealt to the immortality field. You would have to tweak how much damage gets dealt to the field because having the field take 100% of the damage dealt to someone who's being protected by it would kind of make the field die almost instantly whenever you use it because it only has 125 health right now. So you'd have to say it only takes like half the damage that it prevents but this would just be an alternate way to actually kill the lamp is you could instead just focus on killing the target shooting the lamp would be easier but dealing damage to the target will still deal damage to the lamp meaning that if immortality field is somewhere where you can't see it then it will still be dealt with eventually it's not going to just farm infinite value However, it will still last longer than if you were shooting at the lamp itself because the lamp would only take a part of the damage being dealt to the target that is inside of it. And it would also only take the excess damage. So say the target has 50 health. Actually, bad example because 50 health is the threshold for 200 health heroes. Let's just say the threshold is still 25% and the hero in the lamp is the Baptiste and he has 100 health. You hit him as Cassidy, your bullet deals 70 damage, Bap would take 50, and then the excess 20 damage that didn't do anything would then be cut in half and then dealt to the immortality field as damage. So the Bap field would take 10 damage total. You then crit the Bap that's standing in the lamp, the entire 140 damage is prevented, gets cut in half, the lamp would then take the 70 damage, and you can kind of extrapolate that wherever. I do feel like this would make it bad when used against a team of people or against heavy spam damage characters, and again the lamp itself would still be taking damage as well so you know like a single junk rat concussion mine on a couple of people in lamp would would basically just take it out instantly because of how much damage it would be dealing to multiple people and the lamp at the same time which is the main reason why i think the lamp would have to take reduced damage as opposed to the full amount of damage that it is preventing but it could be a fun idea and then of course i mean balancing through numbers reducing the cooldown if it's too weak now or you know making the lamp take even less than 50 percent of the damage that it prevents but just making it take any of the damage that the lamp is preventing i feel like would be a good direction to take the ability to make it feel a little bit more engaging and not as oppressive to play against and then the last thing to go over with lamp is just taking it in a completely different direction away from immortality style effects and just make it a damage reduction field instead doing this would come with a large change which is that you would no longer be able to destroy the lamp it would just be a fixed duration of allies who are in this area take you know 30 percent less damage or i don't know maybe even 50 percent depends on how strong you want it to be and how long you would want the cooldown to be this makes bap take a hit to his life-saving capabilities because 
He can no longer use Lamp to save low health allies as effectively as it used to work, mainly because stuff that reduces damage isn't really going to be useful on a target that's low health because 90% of their health is already gone. And that's kind of why you would have to make the Lamp unbreakable is that in order to get value out of an effect like this, you'd have to throw it out early before anything happens. It would mainly now be an aggressive tool. You could maybe throw it out to get your team through a choke point that has a thousand damage being spammed through it. Or, you know, to give your team a little bit more survivability if they're getting dove by something and you throw it out early. It would also mainly only be useful for supports in DPS just because of how they've changed how stacking damage resist works in Overwatch 2. It now will only go up to 50%. Meaning that a tank with armor, which already gives you 30% damage resist, wouldn't really gain that much from a lamp that now just provides damage resist. Especially, you know, a hero like Orisa, whose fortify and armor already gets her well above 50% damage resist. It's just another interesting idea to throw out there. I honestly think the second one would probably be the best one for the game. Now for the next ability... Mercy's Resurrect is an absolute nightmare for balance. It's not going to go anywhere because it's kind of a core part of her hero identity. A Mercy without Resurrect would just feel like a Genzi without Swift Strike or a Doomfist without Rocket Punts. Just, you know, soulless. But balancing an ability that can just resurrect an ally is kind of hard. I feel like the current state of Resurrect is pretty fair. It's usually very risky. It requires Mercy to basically stand AFK for a full second in order to pull it off. A lot of the time, she'll die immediately after getting it off, even if she does. And it's also on one of the longest cooldowns in the game. The risk reward is kind of there for Res. It has the longest cooldown in the game, makes Mercy very vulnerable and likely to be killed. Of course, your team is probably not going to look at her anyways because... She actually has a cloaking device that only works for everybody on your team that isn't you. That's why nobody suits the Mercy when she reses. It's because of that cloaking device. I feel like the most fair thing you could do for res is possibly to cap the amount of health that someone is able to be resurrected with. Because currently it feels like you're able to just get a ton of value from res, especially on a tank. Because you're going to be resurrecting a 700 health monstrosity that's going to have all of their cooldowns online. So possibly saying that tanks only get resed with half of their health would be more fair if that makes sense to the team that didn't stop the res because like if they res a genzi or something that's like fine if they res a 700 health roadhog that now has hook and he has full vape that's going to be a nightmare to deal with usually the genzi is going to have to use every cooldown to disengage because he's going to be a target immediately when he comes out of res i've seen a lot of times where a dps that gets res in a bad spot is usually just going to be killed immediately. Meanwhile, if it's a tank, that's like a massive swing for the team that gets the res. So possibly the value from that could be tuned down, but there will still always be situations that res just feels really strong and oppressive to play against. Particularly if you're playing, you know, Widow v Widow, the Mercy res is going to be free. Even if you were to say, Oh, heroes that get resurrected only have half of their maximum health. Well, even then, if you're just doing Widow v Widow, the Mercy res is still going to be free. And then she just heals the Widow for two seconds and then the Widow peeks you and you have to win the Sniper Duel twice in order to actually do anything against a Sniper Comp that has the Mercy Res on them. It's just a very silly ability, but it's going to stay and I don't think there's any easy way to fix it because of how swingy it feels. Some team comps res feels amazing. You play against dive, res is basically a dead ability. You'll die 90% of the time you use it if you try and play it. Against, you know, a Tracer, Winston, Genzi, who are all just going to turn and delete you from reality the moment you even consider trying to res. And then, of course, there's Valkyrie res, which even if you're trying to kill the Mercy, if you're the only one looking at her, the constant healing during Valkyrie can make it impossible for one person alone to stop the res. But I mean, at that point, that is still kind of just a team diff. And I mean, Valkyrie is her ultimate. It should be able to do something. Comboing it with res is just a very good way to use the ultimate. It. So, I mean, I feel like that's kind of why I think the only change I think is reasonable would be to make tanks respawn with only half of their total health pool. Because it would still be much more health than a DPS or support character would have, and the tank would 
still respawn with all of their defensive cooldowns ready to go. So I think that it would be fair, but I don't know what people would think of it. Now going on to one of the supports I actually main, it's... Now, Zenyatta's Orb of Discord has already been changed once, so that it cannot be reapplied to the same target after it is removed from them. For, uh, I believe it's 9 seconds, maybe it's 8, maybe it's less. Maybe I'm not actually true Zenyatta main, because I don't know this. And while I do think the chains is more fair against tanks just because it makes it so zen can't just pop discord on them every two seconds when it's removed the other thing is that it does encourage zenyatta to just permanently leave discord onto the tank if he's ever able to get it on from the zenyatta's perspective i think it's fun because it means that it's now more important for me to discord the tank at the right time as opposed to just having discord on them constantly because if i put discord on them before they go in and then they just hide for a second get rid of discord then i can't put it on them for the entire fight because they are unable to be targeted by discord for the next nine seconds but the thing is a lot of tanks don't have an easy way to get rid of discord and they also need to be the front of their team and protect them from damage sometimes if you put discord on a tank at the right time they're not going to be able to back up because that would lead to their team getting absolutely white. And in that situation, then you're more so encouraged to just leave the Discord on the tank if you are able to get it on them. Just because if you do try and put it on someone else for a second to try and give your DPS the leg up in a 1v1 they're having, then you can't put it back onto the tank. So it kind of just leads to a case where you try and leave it on the tank 24-7 again, because if you do take it off, you can't put it back on. And it is an ability that is more valuable on the tank because tank of more health so the increased damage against them is a lot more valuable in getting through their massive health pool and i mean zenyatta isn't exactly meta now but he's still very much playable i play him a lot and if he ever does become played a lot more commonly then i'm sure people are going to complain about discord orb again so let's just talk about it starting with the boring solution same with sleep dart and anti-nade just have the increased damage taken from discord orb be less for tank characters so say for you know you put it on a support or a dps it they take 30 percent more damage you put it on a tank, the tank will only take, you know, 15% more damage. Because, you know, tanks have a massive hitbox, they are much easier to hit. The extra damage will still be useful. If you do that, you could maybe even go back to how Discord Orb was before, where you can move it between targets depending on what target your team happens to be going after at the moment. If you see your Tracer or Genzi going on to someone, you can swap Orb onto them for a couple seconds and then move it back to the tank or, you know, just keep it moving around the map. That was also a very fun way to play Zenyatta. You just make Discord a bit stronger against, you know, DPS and support heroes, make it a bit weaker against the tank. Now you actually have a reason to be swapping it around. Not going to be as oppressive against tanks, and the increased incentive to put it on supports and DPS also means that it's going to be cycling around more often. Instead of how it is right now, where you're still just trying to keep it on the tank 24-7, it's just that now if the tank gets rid of it, then you just go put it on someone else until you're able to put it back on the tank. It's still kind of just a you leave it on the tank as much as you can kind of ability. The other change that I think would be much more interesting is to combine the whole someone is immune to Discord after you put it on them effect and also make Discord a timed ability. So if you put Discord on someone, it will stay on them for a maximum of 5 seconds. You can move it to someone else and keep it moving just like you did before, but Discord coming off of someone means that that target would be immune from being targeted by Discord for the next five seconds. If it needs to be buffed, you could maybe even say that breaking line of sight would not remove Discord. The only thing that would remove Discord is just that it goes away after five seconds. This would make it so that you could only ever be Discorded for a maximum of five seconds, and then after those five seconds, you'd be completely immune to being Discorded again for another five seconds. Or maybe more, depending on, you know, how it would have to be balanced. Number tweaks are always a thing. And this change is also mainly from the perspective of trying to lessen the impact of discord orb against tank heroes because again even with how the orb is now if you have the ability to remove it yourself if the zenyatta puts it on you too early in a fight then how it is now is pretty good because you can quickly get rid of it and then be immune for a few seconds but this current version of discord isn't really good if you're playing against a zenyatta 
that's going to hold Discord for a bit and then pop it on you when you're knee deep in a fight and you don't have the opportunity to back off. Because then he can just leave it on you basically forever if you have no way to get rid of it yourself. You're knee deep in a fight, you can't back up to try and break LOS of Discord to get it off of you because that means your team would lose the fight because you'd give up a lot of space. But if you were to just make Discord orb five seconds on, five seconds off, that could be a lot more fair to play against because then you'd only be discorded for a maximum of five seconds before it's gone and now you're free of it for five seconds before Zenyatta is able to put it back onto you. Because barriers and some other defensive abilities like, you know, Zarya Bubble will prevent Discord from being applied onto you, but once it's on, it doesn't count as breaking line of sight so the Zenyatta could just, you know, keep it on you forever until you're able to back off and actually hard break LOS if you even get the opportunity to do that. So that would be my idea for trying to change Discord. And again, from Zenyatta's perspective, I feel like it would be fun to play because now it's not just I try my best to get Discord onto you and then leave it there for as long as possible. It's now just, I want to time my Discord on you when it would be most important for my team to have it on you. Because I know that it will only last for five seconds. And it's not like the Discord we have now, where I just have to wait until you're far away from cover and then just put it on you and try and leave it on you for as long as humanly possible. Then finally, for the last major ability that a lot of people probably expected, Kuriko is one of the most complained about heroes in the game right now, and I also hate her, mainly because I think she's incredibly overrated. Her entire hero design is just a really stupid mess, where especially when she first launched, she was able to two-tap people from across the map, and then also go lose a 1v1 to a Torbjorn turret, because without critical damage, her damage output was very low. Swift Step is poorly designed because it enables her to go on insane flanks and then just safely teleport to her team's backline whenever she wants to. But if you are trying to actually play her like a support and you're playing in the backline and you get attacked, your only option is to teleport to your team's frontline and then die there instead. This character feels like they were designed around a deathmatch game and not a team-based game. And then of course, the ability we're talking about right now, Protection Suzu. Basically the only actually strong, consistent ability that she has, whether it's used defensively or offensively. It cleanses, it heals, it provides brief invulnerability. Basically has no weaknesses, it's really hard to fuck up. Recently, Blizzard has tried nerfing it by reducing the invulnerability but giving it more healing which i think was actually a net buff for suzu because healing is just good healing is just guaranteed survival against damage while invulnerability is more temporary survival against damage and i think the best way to address suzu being a problem and not fun to play against would just be to make it a single target ability this means its power is very limited you cannot suzu an entire team you'd have to decide who you want to Suzu. But at the same time, doing this would also make Suzu stronger in other ways. Even if you were to leave the invulnerability and the healing and everything at the same numbers that they are at right now, Suzu being more of an applied effect similar to Zarya's ally bubble would mean that it would not be blocked by barriers, you could not defense matrix it, it would be instant, you could suzu someone who is in the air much more easily, but the thing is you could only suzu one person. And more importantly, for the people who are terrified of DPS Kirikos in their backline, Kiriko could no longer suzu herself, so you can only suzu her allies. I feel like this would be fine. I don't know how people would feel about having this be in the game that she can just, you know, apply suzu to anyone but only one person if they think it would be better or worse to play against so i'd honestly be interested in what people think about these different changes for these abilities and if they think they would be interesting or not i'll actually try and read through the comment section this time usually have too much anxiety to do it otherwise but i mean people can also suggest abilities that they would want to see me talk about because i'm a dumbass and i enjoy talking about the game and because of that as a bonus we're going to talk about swift step because i'm on the topic of kiriko anyways so Swift Step is irredeemable. You cannot salvage this ability. The inherent limitation of only being to teleport to allies is massive to overcome, and in order to change that, you'd basically have to completely change the ability and what it does. I will say, in my honest opinion, if Kiriko can no longer suzu herself, I feel like Swift Step is fine in its current state. I feel like people would be fine if Kiriko is able to Swift Step back to her team if she's not able to also suzu herself before or afterwards. It would mean she is more vulnerable to being dove or targeted by a flanker or mobile hero if she does use 
Swift Step to go back to her team after horribly butchering a flank. And it would also mean that on the flanks, he would only have one get out of jail free card ability, which would be Swift Step. If you did want to nerf it just for the flanker Kuriko play style, I would say you just reduce the range of the ability so that if she does flank too deep, then she's going to be too far away from anyone to even teleport back to. I don't think that you could reasonably say that she cannot teleport through walls just because having mobility that's limited only to your nearby allies is a very limiting factor already. I mean, comparing Swift Step to, you know, Mercy's Guardian Angel, Guardian Angel is on like a second and a half to a three second cooldown. If you just fly to someone, it's only a second and a half. You can also fly to dead bodies, and you can also, if you wanted to, fling yourself in a random direction at Mach 7 turbo speed if you want to make the cooldown on Guardian Angel 3 seconds instead of 1.5. The ability for Mercy to mix up her movement and momentum off of Guardian Angel is what make it good despite being limited to only going to allies. And of course, you can also go to dead bodies as well and mix up your movement and momentum off of them. And it's also on a very low cooldown. In the case of Swift Step, it just drops you off of that ally. You can't really use that momentum to go anywhere else. If that ally is not in a safe spot, you teleport to them, you are not in a safe spot. And if you cannot suzu yourself either before or after being able to Swift Step, again, this whole thing is kind of just going off of the suzu change that I was talking about. Then if you were able to find the target that Kiriko was teleporting to, you can just easily take her out with any sort of range character or mobility. I feel like a big part of why Swift Step is so broken is because suzu is just such a good ability for Kiriko to have. She can just use everything for herself. Swift Step and suzu together on herself means that she can just be incredibly safe at the cost of not really supporting her team that much, which is part of the reason why she doesn't perform as well, is because if you play like this, you're gonna get out supported by, you know, a Mercy that's damage boosting someone, and actually, you know, enabling their team to play better as opposed to using cooldowns for herself. I feel like the one change I would want to see them do to Swift Step is to give Kiriko the ability to make her own static point that she can teleport to. I've not watched Naruto in like 15 years, but you know that thing with Naruto where they take the kunai and they like tie the paper to it? Let Kiriko do that. Let Kiriko, you know, 10 second cooldown. If you press interact, the next kunai she throws will have a paper on it and she can teleport to that paper wherever the kunai lands. As long as it is within range, it would still have to respect the range of the ability, but it would just let Kriko actually make her own teleport location in a place that she deems is safe, and it would only last for, you know, five seconds, eight seconds or something, and then she'd have to, you know, make a new one. This would let Swift Step actually be a decent ability to use defensively, because you could have a safe area set up that you could retreat to, that you get to determine yourself. Because currently, I think the ability is absolutely busted if you use it to flank, just because you have a backline to teleport back to that's probably going to be safe. And if it's not safe, then you just have Suzu to bail yourself out. But if you are actually playing in the backline, your teleport options are really bad in most every situation. Sometimes your best option is to teleport to your Winston, who is currently diving. And if the enemy team has anyone who will look at you and not look at the Winston, you'll usually just fall over if you do that. Not saying that there aren't situations where that would work, but there's also a lot of situations where it would just not work and you would die. More importantly, I think it would be fun to have, you know, your own little thing that you could micromanage during a game and keep setting it up in good places. And if someone finds it out, then they could just camp it like Sombra Translocator. And again, I don't think this would be broken because you would still have to be in range of it, especially if they've reduced the range of Swift Step, which they could still do to make it harder to flank really deep and get out for free. I don't know. This is less of a balance change, more just something I think would be really fun for them to add to the game, and that could be very cool. And fix a problem I have with Kiriko's kit, which is that Swift Step is kind of awful to use defensively. Then also on the concept of Kiriko, I think they just need to make Kunai 50 damage with a regular 2 times headshot multiplier. I know that's like, yes, he'd still be able to 2 tap from across the map, but she'd barely be able to 2 tap. You get, you know, 1 healing from a Lucio that happened to be nearby for half a frame, you're going to survive the 2 tap. Alternatively, they could give her a faster firing speed and just, you know, make it 40 damage with a 2 times headshot multiplier. I feel like that could be fair as well. Possibly give her the ability to throw, you know, 2.5 kunai per second 
instead of, you know, two per second like it is right now. Actually, that would kind of just make her very similar to Zenyatta's damage output in a way. I feel like that could be a lot more fair, maybe. I don't know. I'll go for now. Spend too much time sidetracked. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe for Kiriko nerfs in Season 9. And until next time, see ya. Shoutouts to Simple Flips.